Patrick Kyle here. This video is a flight that I did about a month ago and I recorded all my weather checks that I did. So I thought it would be a good video to show you what I look at. Like I always get asked, what apps do you use? They're not really apps. There's a couple websites, but that's kind of what this video is about with a couple of snippets from out there in the field. So enjoy. The conditions are strong. It's midday, strong conditions. It's been about an hour. I've been doing some practice kiting. It feels great to me. I'm able to handle the wing just fine. That should be kind of the, I guess the litmus test on should you go or should you not go is can you kite safely and control the wing completely? If you can do that, the conditions are likely not too strong for you to go fly. Now what's happening up above is important. So we need to look that up. The very first thing I look at is just the local overview. I go to this forecastweather.gov. I scroll down to the what the overall forecast is. Sunny, 84, west wind around 10. Is that what I'm seeing at the field? Also look for the trend. Is it going to slow down? It looks like tonight, southwest around 5, becoming calm in the evening. So the day looks like it's only going to go downhill from its strongest point. From the same page, I click on the hourly forecast, and I look for the trends in the wind. I see that from the peak of the day, it's only going to go downhill. So you can expect if you can handle the strongest conditions, then you can handle anything that's going to come up after that. At this point, I go over to another website, aviationweather.gov, and I look for my winds aloft. Now, this is the surface winds. We've already got a handle on those. So I'm going to go back up here, and at the vertical level, I'm going to click that over to 3,000 feet. That's the next step up. And then we're going to look back down here. Now, I'm in the northwest corner of Louisiana, and you can see at 3,000 feet, if you look at the legend below, we're somewhere around 25 knots. That's roughly 30 miles an hour. Okay, so that's pretty strong. So I'm gonna do a double check at a different website. This is windy.com. And at the surface, it is showing you know, roughly eight to nine, 10 miles an hour, just like the other source. But this one, you can look at 2,000 feet. At 2,000 feet, it's showing basically 20 miles an hour. So yeah, it's gonna be rough, but it's within my realm, so to speak. So I'm going to go look at the thermal activity now. Now, this is a website that I pay for, XC Skies. It's the best $40 I spend all year, and I use it mainly so I can check thermal strength. Buoyancy to shear, those are the two big ones. You can see it's got five different weather models here that show me the thermal activity. So what are we looking at here? What I'm seeing is basically about 400 feet per minute up at two o'clock in the afternoon is what kind of, is what kind of, blah, blah. It's what I can expect for this time of the day. Now, if you look over here an hour ahead at three o'clock, things go up a little bit. It's, uh, most of the models are showing somewhere in the upper 400s. So it's picking up and let's look again at what happens one hour after that at four o'clock. Okay, things start to go back down. So that shows you where the peak of the day is. And that's what I'm using this site for. I'm looking at the updraft velocity, how fast the air is going up. And that'll tell me how big the bumps are basically due to the thermal activity. Now, when you throw in the winds aloft and the thermal activity, that's your combination that you're looking for just how raunchy the air is. Excuse me for hiding in the edge of the truck, but it's so windy out there, I'm afraid the audio is just gonna be crap. It's a high pressure day. When you have high pressure, the thermals are extremely sharp. What am I looking right at the sun? Yeah, I guess so. How's this in the background? That may be good. Let's talk high pressure versus low pressure. High pressure days want to hold the thermals down to the ground, and when they break off, you get really sudden sharp gusts. That's what I experienced a while ago, and that's why. They were softer in the morning because they weren't as strong, but after it Build some heat energy, things start cooking off. The bubbles that break loose, break loose like mad. So if you do get a core on a blue day, yeah, terminology, let's talk vocabulary. It's called a blue day because the thermals can't penetrate high enough to produce cumulus clouds. So hence, blue day. It's dry, dense air. It's heavy, there's high pressure. There's a lot of air pushing down, holding things on the ground. Keeps it from moving. Like waves in deep water, they're not very big. But it was just one big gust. I'm gonna see how long between the big ones here comes another big one i can hear it in the trees something to consider so a little heads up here the flight that i did for this video was actually the flight that i did in my practice tips video but i didn't want to combine too much stuff at once so i wanted to make this one more about the weather check but i included some of the flight just 
so that you can see the flight that went along with the weather check on this video. So what I'm doing here, so I'm going on a little high wind practice flight. I'm gonna kite my wing up and if I like it, I'm gonna send it. Come on up wing. Got a cravat, come out of there. Well, the cravat came out right as I lost it. And the important thing to remember, and when it's high wind like this, is not to force anything. I'm not trying to turn garbage into gold here. I'm waiting till it's right. Oh, there's a nice strong cycle. That should be easy. Yeah, I gotta run toward the wing a little. Slow it down. I am able to penetrate a little bit. That was my main concern. Now that I see I can, I'm just gonna enjoy it. Oh yeah, thermals are pretty mild. I can feel 400 feet a minute up and down. Whoa, there's a downwind something. <laughs> yeah man I'm just surfing the breeze flags honking down there be careful not to get behind that water tower there's probably some substantial turbulence behind that obstruction ah so rewarding to practice when you practice 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 all the time you could do this kind of stuff without any kind of you're not, you don't have the apprehension behind it because you know what the sky's gonna offer. Using my active flying skills, very important. I'm able to kite and anything today has to offer. So I'm probably able to fly in it as well. Oh, I just got lifted like crazy. <laughs> and my glider shoots out the end of it. And I'm lifted again. I could turn with it, but there's really no need to. It's uh. Everything's kind of broken today. The buoyancy to shear is not all that. <laughs> I'll just wait for this rough stuff to pass on by. In the thermals and out of them. You know, flying through thermals doesn't really teach you anything about them. You have to stay with them to learn. You've got to feel the edges of them and feel what the center of them's like. And see where they go. Hang on to them. Oh, what a good sesh. What else can I teach you about this? I think I've stressed all the important points. Let's maybe do an approach. See what it's like to land in these conditions. Maybe a touch and go? And I got fuel. Oh, wind's lulling though. Means there's a gust coming. Try not to impale myself on a light pole. Good stuff. And you're just cutting the wing. Nice. I like it. Should I go again? Maybe? Yeah? No? I'll save it for this evening. Yeah, so there it is, guys. A uh, little high wind practice session. I like everything about it. You should do it too. Much love, guys. Call out.